had to bring him. Hi, baby. Oh, there he is. That's right. Dudes, welcome to the Utah Football Fans Podcast. We are live on YouTube right now. We haven't done this before. It's very exciting. No editing it's, now. It's a whole, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we better watch what we say. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to all of you who are joining us right now and anyone who logs on later. We'd love to have you. Make sure you comment. We want to we want to hear what you have to say. But anyways, welcome to the show. We are a week away. Oh, I can feel it, baby. It's that is wild. It is wild. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm ready. One week away. Anyways, all right. Thank you to our sponsor, Thomas Orthodontics. Please look him up at thomasortho.com. And we went to FanFest on Saturday. That was fun. It was, you know what? It was great. Yeah. Anybody who went last year <laughs> was not FanFest. It was a, it was it a was yard a, sale. It was sale. a yard yeah. garage sale. It was terrible. So I didn't really have really high hopes this time. I didn't know what we were in for, but it was fun. It Until was, it rained. I know. It like cut it short. It was like still, an hour. Then, they had to kick everybody off the field. Oh, I didn't know that. I couldn't go. It so. was all set up on the field. They had all the different sports teams, and each team was doing like little games and stuff for kids. And then they had autographs. And then yeah. you could go inside the football locker room. I was shocked that there was football players there because in the years past, the football players don't show up to this. No. Bryn's got a new favorite. Brett. Oh, oh, go oh, Bryn. Hold on, hold on. Let me guess. New me favorite. Guess. You gotta gotta give me give me a couple hints. Offensive, no, I'm not giving you any defensive hints. player. That's all I need to Offense. know. Offense. So different from my last love, well, Devin Lloyd. It's Jackson. Yes. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's Jackson. It's funny that you would know <laughs> that. immediately. Man. I saw him. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, my husband was there. He was there, but I saw JJ. It's kind of an open thing. <laughs> and I was like, Gary knows my I my eyes just like followed Gary it. Gary did the same thing. I had to, I got no a pic. I did get a picture with him. I know. I saw. Yeah, you saw. Oh, I'm yeah. Fully cemented. He is my guy now <laughs> this yeah. year. But we got to take a picture with him. Lander Barton was there. Hey, how's so the neck? nice? Is his neck as big as it no, looks? No, they got the wrong picture, dude. Because his neck in the picture. Yeah, was, in real life, I don't feel like I think it was, it was his brother. Big. I do believe it was his brother. They got, got the picture? wrong thing. No. no. Dude, go look at it. And go then look at a picture of him. Okay. Seriously. He right. was so they nice. They messed up, dude. His neck was not he, his neck was normal giant for Big a neck, linebacker. But not like <laughs> Okay, but we also <laughs> met Jalen Glover. Dude. That dude's arms. Oh yeah. Okay, he came up to to me. Yeah. I've never seen anything before in my life. He's shorter than I am. Yeah. But just his arms were this big. I'm not even so exaggerating. We took a oh, so so we took jealous. a picture, and of course, you, you put your arms around <laughs> to take the picture. Yeah. And so I have my hand on his trapezius muscle. <laughs> and is it just and this dude, big? I could I could have gone like this and not moved it. That dude's arms. <laughs> it was like so a steel bar, man. <laughs> I'm so jealous. Jacked up. Anyways, but it was fun. That's we awesome. did get to meet some of you guys, some of you who listen. Thank you for saying hi, because we loved meeting you. We wanted to give you some shout outs. I just thought all of our listeners were bots, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Gary just created all of them to make it seem like people actually followed us. But No, we got to see Stephanie. Stephanie, shout oh. out to you. We see you everywhere. She's great. Um, Tanner, it was fun meeting you. Amy, who I think her YouTube's like Amy Wan Kenobi or something like that. It is. That's a yeah. good one. <laughs> so we got to meet Amy. <laughs> Colby, um, and then Cameron, and I think it was DJ, DJ, RJ, RJ. what DJ? We I met them remember, last year at the thing we did at R and R Barbecue. Oh barbecue. yeah, and the one guy, he's the one that had the twenty two logo yep. shaved in his head. Yep. We so we saw them at family. He doesn't have anything shaved in his head yet, but he said it's coming for the season. <laughs> <laughs> hey, by the way, Amy's on right now. Oh hi, Amy. <laughs> Sweet. And it is, good to it's see Amy you. Wan Kenobi, yeah. so that's good. All right. It was great Shout to out. meet you. Um, okay, one more little housekeeping thing. The tailgate next week is on. It's happening, baby. It's happening next Thursday before the Florida game. So from three to five, we will be at our tailgate spot. We're going to have food, drinks, some giveaways. Stop by. Come say hi. We are on Guardsmen. Directly across the street from the tennis 
center. So in between the tennis center and the football center, there's a crosswalk. You go across that crosswalk, up the stairs, and there's our spot on the grass. On the grass, right there. We'll have signs and flags. Oh, you'll and you'll, you'll, you'll get up us. there. You'll see. You'll we'll know have it's signs. Us. Cool we, guy Gary's going to be there with his glasses. I'll have my shades <laughs> on. So of his shades. Just, just for everybody. Just for cool for everybody. Gary. Even if it's raining, these Florida babies are fans, on. Oregon fans. <laughs> SC fans, oh. everybody. They're all know, everybody's welcome. I don't know about SC. By the way, I wanted to quickly a shout out to my favorite SC fan, uh, Michael Johnson on Twitter. <laughs> um, you're my favorite USC fan, by the way. Sure. I probably might the only USC fan that I like. That's true. Oh, no. Okay. Anyways, thank you to shout those out, who are stuff. who are partnering with us for the tailgate. So Sugar House Distilleries giving us some drinks. Uh, Gaetano subs and then nothing bunt cakes. I'm so excited for the bunt cakes. I know, so excited. We're still, we might get some more partners in the next week or so, but yeah, stop by. Oh, grab those. We are also doing a giveaway with Williams Wood Design. He does some cool stuff. He does these really awesome signs. These ones are like the thinner ones, but he does some bigger ones that are thicker also with all the different Utah yeah. logos. So we're going to have some giveaways and then we're going to have some other stuff. Where's the other one? Do you have the other one? It's over there. I can grab oh. it one second to kind of show it off. It's cool. I want to show it. Okay. Anyways. Yeah. Stop by. So from three to five, as long as the food lasts, even if there's the food goes, just come say hi, come get excited. Cause it's Florida, baby. Eight days, baby. It's in a week. Here's the other one. Oh no. Yeah, this is one of his other designs. This one's mine, does. though, by the way. This one's going into my house. So, <laughs> But it's cool. It's really cool. So we've got a few of those we're going to give away. I've got one with the, uh, the it looks like this one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, look him up. Williams Wood Design. We will post his um, website on our social medias, our Facebook group, things like that. Because yeah, He's you, posted in the Facebook group a couple times. Yeah, you can buy his stuff. Buy he, it. He makes them. He makes some really cool stuff. He does so. a really great job. All right. Utah, Florida. Here All we right, go. here we go. Let's talk some Are stuff. Are we ready to talk about it? Let's, no. let's talk. Let's talk. Here we go. We're going to talk. Uh, well, can I say this first? Sure. I, I'm going to say this first. Tell me what you think. <laughs> say Look, whatever you want. Nobody's played any games, as far as I know. <sighs> nope. As as uh, I know. <laughs> nope. So, reality is, we are all spitting in the wind. <laughs> is that yeah. the expression? Is that? That's it. Never heard that. That sounds like uh, something that sounds really old. So you're spitting in the wind. It may Jeez. hit you. It may hit me. It may hit the other. <laughs> we don't know yet. Polls even right now are kind of stupid. Polls are so dumb. Until four weeks in, we don't know what teams are going to be like. Now, yeah, obviously there's some educated guesses and all that kind of stuff. But we have Georgia's no stats. Not playing anybody. We have so no they're visuals. Probably... We don't know how teams are. So it's all speculation, speculation, but it's fun. But let's let's be real about it. The other thing I want to stay, uh, state right off the bat here is I have great respect for Florida. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I mean, their history, their yeah. championships, their traditions, their passion yeah. of their fans. Yeah. It's borders on psychotic. I mean, it's but. unbelievable, but I have a, I have a great respect. And they, so they I agree have, with you on that problem. I mean, <laughs> it's, I think it's fantastic that they're coming. Um, they're coming in, which is an unusual thing. I can't remember what I heard, but I don't know if they've done this since the nineties or something. No, no, they haven't traveled west of the Mississippi since like, so before Abraham Lincoln was president or something <laughs> like that. I mean, seriously, that's a this, real stat. Look it up. Look it up. Ken, must. but I respect them. <laughs> I respect how good they are and have been and whatever I will. But I will add this little caveat. Okay. I've well, two things. One is I've heard, I've watched a couple of podcasts and on the one hand, and some people have tweeted at us and stuff like that. On the one hand, they are saying how fantastic Florida is going to be. Mm -hmm. To the point where you know it's they're full of crap. Okay. It's just exaggeration. I'm just telling you. And then there are those saying, Why are you why are you so worried about Florida? Because we're not going to be very good. That's true. There is this and two I'm saying, sides of the spectrum. Which is it? Yeah. It's one or the other. So <laughs> let's just be rational together here. And um, so there's that. The other thing though, and I and this is true of all fan bases, but I mean, I've watched a couple of guys who've trashed Utah and given us no respect. 
Yeah. I'm, now, I, I understand if you want to cheer for your team and you think they're going to win and you can give all your reasons why. I'm all, I'm, hey, that's what we're going to be that's doing. That's what we do. And a <laughs> lot of people do. Yeah. And whatever. But when I listen to people just ramble on, total disrespect, it makes me not like your team. <laughs> so what I'm saying is... I still like Florida and their traditions. I admire it. Yeah. And we, as a program and as a fan base, we got a ways to go to even come close to that. Let's be real about it. Oh, yeah. So I respect it. But when I watch them tr say some stuff they say, yeah, it. Well, then when they give when they give Utah and their team and their players zero respect, it, it does. It comes off like, OK, I get cheering for your team, but. The, that level of arrogance that like if we could just trot out our mascot and beat them it's like yeah so that anyway that those two stuff. things that two things but yeah i'm with you i you know i think it's florida cool, though. In, i'm excited to play them it, again it's awesome but let's go okay let's first things first cam rising we don't know Bad if he's going rising. to play um what do you mean the reality, though, here's here's <laughs> if you've listened to any interviews and things that I'm hearing, things you read, trying to put it all together. This is how I see it, where we are as of today, unless I missed something this afternoon or whatever. Uh, Cam Rising has been practicing with the team. OK, not not all drills. But he's been practicing. And. Correct. He is ready to go. In, in his own words, okay. as and it's really only it's the doctors who are going to say yeah. yes or no. Okay. That's where it is. And he even he even said um, that it's and his direct quote because I wrote it down. It's coming down to the wire for him to play, uh, but he likes where he is at. So um, he's ready to go. Now, and I brought this up, I think, our last podcast. I was wrong. I figured that he would know this week if he's the guy because they have to practice next week. You know, it's game week. Game prep, so yeah. they would know by the end of this week that Cam would or would not be the guy. And then if he was not the guy, uh, they, we would know. We, they probably wouldn't tell us, but they would know. Right. But it was Whittingham. I can't remember which interview that I heard it at, but he said, "Oh no, it, it's it's we're, it's going to be next week." He goes, Cam, and this is where he said Cam's been practicing. He's experienced. He's our guy. So we won't know till next week. Well, and he even said somebody asked him, like, "At what point do you pull the plug and you say, okay, he's a hundred percent not playing, and it's going to be backup quarterback X?" He said, 10, ten minutes, minutes before game time." He was joking, but I'm not sure. He's not joking. Here's the thing about it is, and and Wit is maybe a little bit on that. Okay. Well, we're saying though, an hour before. I mean, it's look at next look, week. Yeah. Look at the Barnes situation from last year at Washington State. They didn't know until 45 minutes before the game. They're out there warming up, and then it was, "Hey Barnes, you're it." The team did not know until about five minutes before going on the field. There's a video of him saying, "Cam's not going. Barnes, you're the guy." Because Rising was out there warming up. Exactly. That game. Yeah. So I. I think that they'll have a really good idea, but freak, dude. Here's the other thing, though, and Wit has always done this. For all we know, Cam is he's the guy. They know he's the guy. He's going to be the guy. For all we know, and Wit is all about these little mind games. Yes, he is. And now it doesn't make any difference. Probably not, because I guarantee Florida's preparing as though Cam is going to play. Of course they are. Of course they are, because it's a huge difference between Cam and other guy. But Wit loves to do this. He loves to do it. He loves to, especially coming out of camp. He's done this on years when it's not an injury question. No. It's like, he he does this all the time. So I don't, that's where. I'm I don't think he's gaming us here though. I don't know. When I, I listen think to it's both all, of him. It's now, all part of it. It's maybe, I don't, I don't I get don't the feel. I think right. My gut feeling is right now. They're still unsure. Yeah, they're, 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 they're unsure. unsure. It's all, it's all, they're unsure. Exactly. They, they have an idea. I mean, it's, it's eight days. They have to know pretty confidently one way or another, but they're going to continue to play this game. I don't well, think it's, I, I honestly don't, my view, it may be, but when I watched the, 
several interviews and listened to the interviews, I didn't get that feel at all. I think this is legit that if he's ready to go, the doc says, boom, you're on, he'll go. I don't well, think I get for sure why Cam is saying, I'm ready to go. I want to get out there and play. Of course he wants to get out there and play. He wants a rematch. Of course he does. He wants to get out and he's a competitor. He wants to. Now, I guess I say that, but we do know with the Washington State situation, it was him that yeah. said, I don't think I should or the play. the betterment of the team, he said, I, I can't go. So maybe that's. Anyway, that's that's I where we're that at with that. him. Yeah. So maybe we'll get some info in, in our we're next not pod next know. week. Maybe something will come out. But anyway, now here's the other stuff. Let's talk about kick off. the backup. Who's going to be the backup? If you remember, what was it, a week ago, it was Barnes. Mm -hmm. But just as of the last couple yeah. of days, it is not that anymore. It is now neck and neck. So real um, quick um, on that, our our boy uh, D. Evans, shout out D. Evans. Yeah. Just, uh, he's, he is saying the rumor coming out of camp is that Nate Johnson took all the 11 versus 11 snaps yesterday. That's the rumor. Well, I, I <laughs> when that, I was listening to Wit, deal. when I was listening to Wit oh, and some other stuff, here's the interesting thing. Whittingham had all the stuff to say about Nate Johnson. And then he asked, what about Bryson? Barnes. Barnes. Uh -huh. It was like f five words. Mm -hmm. So, but what he said, yeah, it's neck to neck, and they're going to know Friday. This Friday, is they're going to, they are going to say who the guy is, who the that, number two the is. The number two is the guy who will start if Cam doesn't. If this is Friday, so it's neck and neck. It's between Barnes and Johnson. But what he's talking, and so what about Johnson? And he was just saying that uh, that he his knowledge of the offense now has just accelerated. Up to another level. That's the thing is the the progression over the last couple of weeks has been tremendous. His reads, uh -huh. progressions in the throwing game. Um, and the way Whittingham said it is the game to him has slowed down. You mm -hmm. hear that phrase all the time. But this is what he's talking about, Nate Johnson. He has more presence and command, which you need to be when you're the QB. But the interesting thing, and then he said, but Nate Johnson, so he's saying all of these things. He goes, Nate Johnson is not a pa is not a pocket quarterback. Yeah. Uh, and he's not. And he's not. He said he is very much a DTR, and he even used Richardson-esque, not in the size, well, but no. in the ability to run. Yeah, Richardson was a, okay. a freak athlete playing quarterback which we haven't had a guy like this uh -uh. but you've seen those videos of johnson running on the treadmill he's a freak athlete he's a, oh he he is absolutely he is. a freak athlete he just not has the size it's the size yeah. he doesn't have that not right now and no. they even last year when he would come in if you remember he would come in they had packages for him and it, he was he never threw the ball it was always come in and run but his he has evolved into a much better passer and his understanding of the offense has gone through the roof from, from yeah. what I've heard. It's a dual threat now. Yes. Mm. Which is incredible. And he have. was the third string guy because of but he he's improved Caught to this up. point. Yep. Uh what Whittingham and I he said that I ideally, if it was Nate Johnson, <laughs> he said that he would have 25 throws, uh, 12 runs, and the rest we'd hand off to Jaquindon and the rest of the guys. That's that was his idea ideal hmm. then like i mentioned he talked <sighs> about then so then what about barnes and he said he's confident does you know mistakes are rare and he's proven we know who he is and then they moved on so i'm that's, telling you right here interesting here it is you've already said it here's what i think it's it, if cam rising doesn't start nate johnson is going to be on that field i said that last week I just, Gosh. but yeah, but I said that before okay. we know what we know now. The upside for Nate Johnson is the upside is huge. And the fact that he is now caught up to Barnes, mm -hmm. if, they're, if they're equal footing. Now, Barnes is a better athlete than people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. I've seen some things, but he's not Nate Johnson. Okay. If, no. they're, if they're equal, not in the by athlete, the way, but he's hey, Jim Williams. Jim's on saying hi. Hi, Jim. Um, Jimmy. Great That's follow so nice on Twitter. so nice of you to join Shout us. Shout out. 
Um, if they're equal passing and then Johnson gives you that run, that dual threat ability, he's the guy. It's just the scary unknown of a guy yeah. who has not started a game against Florida against an SEC team. The humongous fast defensive uh, line. Oh, no, that is scary. But I don't I think mean, he's nervous. I can't remember how they said it, but I don't think he f- he's feeling that right now anyway. By well, way, but like but, you're go ahead. I just Ken Muss, who's a Florida fan with a great last name. Ken Muss, why baby. are you not a Utah he's fan? He's got to be a just... U- he's got to be like a de facto Ken Utah the Muss. Fan. Ken, Ken the Muss. Change it. Ken the Muss. He was just saying <laughs> that there are four to five freshmen on the Florida two deep right now, so they're pretty young. Yeah, yeah on the defensive are. side, especially. Just another point. Okay. Mm. Ooh, Still, so our depth chart. Okay, they're young, but they're all five star dudes that run four two forties. So our depth chart is coming out tomorrow or Friday. Uh huh. And I then, can't wait. And then we're no, but because uh, it's it, just going to be someone or someone or someone or someone or someone or. Know, and that's how Whit do does that. it. It's Whittingham. Yeah, but at least we're mind games. <laughs> but with, for instance, the offensive line, and this is one of the good signs. And I've been hearing this for, you know, weeks, actually months, that the O line is solid as can be, yeah. and it is too deep. In fact, there are guys beyond the too deep that, if called upon, would be fine. Yep. So our O line. Looks good. They had one position that was in question, and it's been solidified. They have all five dudes. It's ready to roll. That's I've heard. The I same think thing. our O line's ready to roll, baby. Um, now, you know, quarterbacks say this stuff all the time, and so you can go back and find. I don't remember which interview I it was that with Whittingham is is uh, he said that yes, this is the most talent, most talented Utah team. He has ever had. And then, of course, he says, but you have to go out on the field field and prove it. When the right. lights are on, you got to prove you it. You heard it. That's his like that's his coin that's statement his thing, yeah. right now. Is he says it for both sides. You got when the lights are on, you got to go out and prove it. But he doesn't always exaggerate to that to this level all the time. No, he's he, he really doesn't. Um no, and he's usually uh, the time I can think of when he did say something like that was for Devin Lloyd yeah. when he said he's like the, the most talented defensive player I've ever seen. And yeah. we all thought, holy cow, because yeah. Whittingham has seen some amazing defensive players. Well, he wasn't wrong. He wasn't wrong. It's true. When that. you think about it, Whittingham usually downplays things. Yeah, mm-hmm. he does. He typically is like, yeah, we're, you know, we're looking good here, but we need to really improve here. He typically downplays things. So to say something like that is it's a big deal. Interesting. He, uh, do you think Whittingham plays chess? Like the actual game of chess? Do you think he's <laughs> he's really good at he it? He could be one of those guys that like plays by mail to some Russian like <laughs> genius and, and because I feel that's like how his brain works. Out. He just loves these like mind game things. Like you make a move, well, I'm gonna make a better move. I don't know. Someone let us know. We need to ask his wife. I'll call him. Per- yeah, <laughs> I'll, text, I'll text him right now. Yeah, don't why don't number. you? I, I will say though, do like, you really? Don't even think about it. <laughs> Our wide receivers. <laughs> is it Simmons? We have a new. So we have Simmons, uh, Pittman, who we Pittman talked about last from Florida time, State. And Matthews. Uh-huh. Plus you have Vele. Money Parks and Vele. And again, Cope. Cope. And Cope. Our wide receiver room has improved. And then the stock comment. Yeah, they look they look good. They're better. But when the lights are on, they got to prove it. That's what he said about them as well. Yeah, it's exactly what it is, where it's like they have improved the most of any group, according to Winningham. But again, you got to prove it. That's exciting for me, though, man. Freaking yeah. Yeah. They were the last 1,000-yard wide receiver we had. Who was it? Remember? 1,000-yard wide receiver in today's football is not crazy. Drez Anderson in like 2000 and. 12 or something like that. It would be phenomenal to have someone that can do yeah. that. Receiver's never been our Nuh-uh. position or it's, like you're saying. I it's mean, always been run the ball, yeah. tight end, and then get the receivers the ball. I mean, there's been games we've gone without the receivers catching a ball. <laughs> Last year. <laughs> Last year with Cam. And yeah. so it would be incredible if a, a receiver could separate himself and, hey, Brendan. Um, oh, Brendan. And then you have the tight ends and the Steve running Smith. game. It, wh- Brendan, I wondered if you were going to hop on here. I don't think so. His Steve Smith. I think he no, was. no, it was. I think it was Drez. I think Drez did it. Yeah. Well, Brendan all, will correct. I was going to say 
Ken Moss, he said, he, I've seen Pittman play. And he's, he's good. And he's good. I'm he's good. So he's going to be good. I'm just saying. He's got to get in the Pittman's ball. It's going to be good. After we talked about him last week, I've been thinking over and over about that Utah USC game where his, his brother? brother just smoked us. That hurt. Yeah, that no, hurt really that bad. So I'm, I'm just really hoping that this Pittman has that talent for us this time. My <laughs> thing is, it kind of reminds me of when. Remember when Carrington came here from Oregon? Oh yeah. We didn't have the guy to give him the ball. That was the problem. He was a. Yeah. He was an NFL caliber guy. We just didn't have someone to give him the ball. Now we do. Now we've got one of the best quarterbacks in the country. If he's healthy, we can throw him the ball. <sighs> hey. Governor Cox retweeted you. Yeah, he did. Last week. <laughs> kind of a big deal, everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we, we're voice. voice again. What is happening? <laughs> well, you need to do like vocal exercises. Get a lozenge or something. <laughs> no, we talked about this. We were going to, you tweeted out to have a <laughs> prayer, have a, prayer. a statewide prayer for Cam and the governor retweeted, he retweeted it. So did you all participate? I did. Now, I'll just say, people, it's a, it's a joke. Know, Lighten up yeah, some people. Okay, so we're having some fun here. Having some fun. Oh my gosh. Breathe. It's a joke. But it's pretty funny it that the funny. governor of Utah retweeted our tweet. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> Cole Becker. If I say Cole Becker, do you know who it is? I do now. No idea. Cole Still, Becker the kicker. is the kicker. <laughs> no know the name because okay. that question came up. Too. About... How's the kicking game? Because oh, yeah. you remember our kicker I said, from Colorado, Cole. Just, just think of that. Name. Colorado Cole. I'll remember his name. And if you remember, we didn't have anybody who could put it in the end zone and kill the play. Yeah. So embarrassing. Yeah. And he says, this guy is putting them five yards deep to out of the end zone. Now that may seem like, so what? Well, if anyone remembers oh, that's a big deal. the problems it created for us in many games. Many games. When they start at the 35. Yeah. No, this we're better because they get a good run on us. Now this that's a good signing. Anyway, he was positive. That's good. that's cool. Good, good, good. Uh I don't know. Cole Bishop, he's 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 gonna be great, but he's just saying, look, when I when I was listening to him, man, it psyched me up because he goes, Look, we we are focused. We are focused. The team is focused on this game. And he goes, We we, and he goes, I, I guarantee it, that they have watched over and over that freaking game from last year in the swamp. Who, who is saying this? Cole. Cole Bishop. Oh. Cole Bishop. Did oh. I say Bagley? No, 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 you no, said no, no. <laughs> If I said Bagley, hey, man. <laughs> shout out. That's a shout free, out that's Cole a free Bagley. one. That's, a, no, that's the Cole one you get, Bishop. Cole. There's so many Coles. So many Cole, Coles. Cole, 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 Cole Bishop. You Cole said it, right? Bishop. <clears throat> he just says, look, we're focused. And he goes, we have watched that film from last year's game and and saw all the freaking mistakes, the bad angles, the bad tackling, and he assured us that that's going to be corrected. To that point, real quick before you go, um, somebody asked Scally about this, and he said, he goes, I mean, summarizing it, but he said that we were not tough enough coming out of fall camp last year. And we missed, go back and watch it. Yeah. They missed a ton of tackles. Yeah. Um, and that has been a huge emphasis on, in fall camp this year is toughness and tackling. And it was so uncharacteristic for a Utah team to not have that physicality. They gained it as the season went on. And then by you know week six, yeah. they were back to Utah. But now it's come out that way. Well, to that point, we talked about this all last year, but this is one thing when you brought up the Florida certain, not all of you Florida fans, but the certain Florida fans that are just like completely discounting Utah. When we played you last year, our defense was full of freshmen and sophomores. We yeah. went over it last year. Like our D line, all those defensive players, they were so young. And I, you could tell, especially in that Florida game, so many mistakes. It yeah. just didn't, it was very uncharacteristic. They've had that now full year. It, they've just gotten better. Last year was a down year for our defense. I think, personally, it's not going to be that exact same way this year. I think the defense is going to be, be better than last year. I better. think. That's what the word is. Absolutely better than they, last year. They have, I mean, they lost Clark Phillips to the NFL. Right. And that's a guy you don't just replace, but they have elevated in a lot of other places. We didn't lose hardly anybody else. I mean, we lost a couple guys, but 
the other guys that have been in the system longer now, it's exciting. I think our, our defense our is secondary going to be legit. And our and our safety. Look, I'm psyched about him. Miles Battle is looking good. Yeah, the Transfer. guy from um, Ole Miss. Ole Miss. So, so it's just some concerns still other than Cam. Okay, we've talked about that. Uh, Keithy, we haven't said anything about Keithy, right. but I'm not sure he's going to be ready. No, he's he's on the same path as Cam. He's right. day-to-day right now. So I do want to say about Keithy, though. Everyone, <laughs> again, some of the Florida people I've heard, oh, they don't have Kincaid. They don't have Kincaid. To remind you, Keithy was our number one guy last year. Yeah, he was the guy. He was the number one tight end until he got injured. So against Arizona State, I had a couple of people yeah, point out. Yeah. ASU. So ASU. again, thank you. He has been injured. I don't know if he's going to play, but if he comes back, I mean, that dude, don't discount him because he is extremely talented. He was above Kincaid last year, at least in the depth chart. No, but he was. He was he the was. one. And then and then you had essentially two superstar tight ends. Yeah. And then he went out. But he is just as capable. As Kincaid, but it is yeah. I don't know if he's going to play. He's so the had other a much longer timeline though. I think the injury must have but been. But you never know. Worse. Everyone's it was different. different. It's every injury is different. It's true. I mean, he, you tear out differently. A couple yeah. of things in there it could be way worse. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah, he's had a lot longer time to um, recover. But the other thing that does worry me is injuries. Is is the witch said that we have a you know because they have been it's been pretty physical camp. Mm-hmm. But there's been a lot of soft tissue type injuries, you know, the pole groin, um, hamstrings, stuff like that. And he and someone asked him, what position group or position worries you the most? And of course he says, quarterback. And then got what's next? And he said, the defensive line <sighs> that he's hoping will get guys back for Florida. Jeez. That scares me. Not serious stuff, but stuff that could keep you out of game if it's not. Oh, that there. scares so, me. And, the, and that scares me because Florida has two excellent running backs, and their game is to run. Um, and we're going to see. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, their strategy is going to be the same as ours. Run yeah. the ball, control the clock. And if our D-line, which is typically a major strength, is not up to, to the standard. Oh, that does make me very nervous. So, okay. Anything else you want to say, at, the, at least as of today, with this with the team? Um, <clears throat> let's say a couple things about Florida. I'm sure. If, <laughs> but let's be real. It is it's an SEC team, which means they have size, skill, yeah. and speed. Whatever. Everybody's saying what, how many games they're going to win or lose or all of that kind of stuff. They are stocked with talent. In fact, I was reading, I was reading an article and it said that I think this, yeah, it was uh 24 seven sports released the top schools in the country by order of blue chip players, meaning four and five star recruits meaning on those, the rosters right now. Jeez. And he said the Gators are 11th in the country uh-huh. with a blue chip rate of 64%. This is ahead <laughs> of teams like Michigan, USC, and FSU. Wow. So yeah. I, I haven't verified all that, but that's the article. I mean, the, yeah, the pond is stocked, if you will. They've got <laughs> the guys. They've, they've got them. Um, the running game is going to be solid. So... You know, our D-line and linebackers are going to have to come to play. It's going to be a physical game. They did just have a running back, though, go out, right, for the season? Yeah, I believe it was a freshman. He was he was okay. more of the, th- the third back that would okay. rotate. Brent, Brendan, what, what was it? Was he? <laughs> Brendan, what was it? Also, to- that's so unfortunate, though. I, I it oh, is. You hate it's when that's happens. It's very, and they had a center who got hurt. He's very, he's day to day from the last that I read. Again, Florida fans, correct me if I'm wrong. But if he's na- unable to go, that's a that would be right. a big loss for them. I mean, that's yeah, a that's center a, is that's a big loss potentially. So we'll see. They have big wide receivers. Uh, Pearsall, isn't that his name? Pearsall. I don't know. I haven't done my research. Big that's dude. next week. That's next okay, week. Okay, we'll next get to. I'm just. We'll I'm have just. Our full. But. <laughs> I, I, but I'm gonna say this. I'll go on record. Is you know, <clears throat> a lot of people are 
putting Florida down. I believe Florida is going to be much better than people think they are. I think so too. I, I do. I, I'm, I'm. They're better. Than, they'll be better than last year, especially with their record. I think that they'll improve. So anyway, I'm giving you that. But I had, I do want to talk about Graham Mertz, their quarterback. Buckle okay. up, Florida fans. <laughs> Here he goes. Here he comes. What are you talking about? I don't know. You you said, I don't I know. What are you going to say? Graham yeah. Mertz, and then he settled in and went like this towards the camera, like he was going to say something profound. <laughs> Graham Mertz. Okay. Here we. Uh, I mean, we have our quarterback <laughs> troubles and uncertainty. Okay. Yeah. So Graham Mertz transferred to Florida um, from Wisconsin, and one of the guys <laughs> that I was I was watching was just praising this dude that. Um, he can run, he can throw. I'm, I'm not saying he's garbage. Okay. Right. And, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm sure he's a good quarterback. However, last year, let me go to his stats. Graham Mertz. So it's just a cool facts. name, by, by the way. way, real quick shout out. Great name. Uh, stink as cat is his name. <laughs> he's um, commented before. I think. He just gave us a uh, a super thanks. So thank oh, you very, very, very much. Did, have, did you say anything? Yeah, he says Utah has an ax to grind being ranked below all the other teams rooting for another Pac-12 title. Go Utes. Go Utes. So appreciate that. Thank you. 2022, he had a 57.3% uh, completion okay. percentage, which isn't that great. You got to be in the 60s. That's his reality. He threw for 20, 2,136 yards and so forth. Now, here's, here's the thing. About rushing. Let me go. Now, I'm going to go here. Let's go here to his, his complete stats. And you, t you tell me. Um, that's not it. Keep talking. And how go. many? Just real quick. Okay, here it is. Hold on real fast. Derek. I'm not even going to try and pronounce your last name. He said, he goes, I'm a, I'm a Wisconsin fan. Oh, okay. I used to live in Madison. He said he's a good QB, not great. I hope he does better in Florida, but I also hope he loses to Utah. So <laughs> he sounds very solid. He was QBR. You can look it up. End of season QBR, uh, Cam Rising was ninth in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, whatever. Mertz was, I think, like 80 in in the country qbr total but let me just here are some stats uh from last year um against minnesota he threw for 170 yards um he gained 11 yards rushing he threw for 83 yards against nebraska uh he rushed for minus seven yards he threw for 176 yards against iowa he he rushed for a minus 17 yards. So he was sacked a bunch. Um, if you go down his stats, yards throwing, 176 in a game, 77 in a game, 203 in a game, 131, 299 and 296, or 206, 94 yards. So you can see what we're yeah. up against. And if you go to rushing, and I, and I say this, and here's my, here's my point. If you look at his rushing yards, and I understand a lot of this can be sacks, but 11, minus 7, minus 17, minus 8, minus 7, 0, 0, minus 22, 15, my, minus 5, Boy. 6, minus 6. That's his stats at Wisconsin. Now he's a QB. The reason I'm saying this is that I, I brought up Richardson versus this guy, right. and the guy got all over top of me trying to say, oh, well, Richardson was – that was his first game. He's not that, you know, whatever. Look, Richardson was Richard, the fourth pick Richardson in the ran NFL for what, almost 700 yards. He ran for like 200 against Plus us. He threw for more yards. This right. is who their QB is. I'm not saying he's garbage, but we, we're not playing Richardson. We're playing, I believe, an average, good college quarterback, but the threat of a run that yeah. we're up, we have to face. What we face with Richardson, what we face with Caleb Williams and DTR and every everybody else. Oh, he's nowhere near those that's guys. That's not in this game. That's why their rushing game and his ability to throw and our coverage is going to be now, essential. We kind of talked about this 
And someone did bring up a good point. And I don't know if this is a good comparison. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about this guy. Honestly, I don't remember ever watching him play. I mean, he played at Wisconsin. So, uh, and they weren't great. We, we have said that the guys who kill us are those mobile, those dual threat mobile guys. He, this, I can't remember who it was. It was a good point. Bo Nix shredded us last year <laughs> on one leg. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, true. Bo Nix is probably a top five college quarterback. He is. Okay. So he has impressed me. And Cam looked awful. It was a in that game. Bad, bad game. I will say that. But to this guy's point, like if he has time back there yeah. and if he is able to complete it and get the ball out on those Patrick Mahomes style plays where it's a two yard in route and the guy runs for 40, then we're screwed. Now, hmm. that can happen. Real quick, you know who has. Um, Graham Mertz as their number 10 quarterback going into the 2024 season. This is fake. This is fake. That's fake. Never mind. We won't even say because that's fake. He addressed it on his show this morning and said that oh. was, that's not my list. Okay. Clatt? Clatt. Yeah. I, okay, I heard that. He Somebody put out on Twitter, Joel Klatt's top 10 quarterbacks. He was on vacation last week. and He, he was here. He Zion. was here in Zion. He was in Zion. But no, his okay. show today, okay. he just I said... Will... Yeah, that's that blew my mind. No, no, no. no that, way. That's when I when fake. I read it, his number no one way. was JJ McCarthy from Michigan, and I was like, "That's odd." <laughs> and then, a fake list. Okay, okay. <laughs> I know. I was glad to hear that too, because I was like, "Joel, man, are you slipping, dude?" No, it was fake. Somebody <laughs> oh, put me. that out there. <laughs> All right. Well, there you, you go. Me. We'll tell. <laughs> well, I mean, it looked legit. All right. What do you got? Okay. Brent okay. has. So well, let's stuff talk. To go over. So because. Obviously, the Utah Florida connection, Swamp Kings just dropped yesterday. Yeah, who's watched it? Anybody? Comments? I've seen two episodes. I saw one. I've watched two during lunch. What? What was that? Face? He got busted. No, no, it was like oh. second lunch at work. But <laughs> yeah, second lunch. Well, you had it's like just so many connections in the urban connection. They but, talked Utah a bunch in the Dan first Mullen. episode. Dan, Dan Mullen, who was ROC. Here's the thing. One thing I'll say. He played for Utah, didn't he? Am I right? Dan Brendan. Mullen? Hey, anybody. Know. Did Dan Mullen play for Utah? I don't know. I like having Brendan live, though, because he's able to fact check. <laughs> yeah, fact check his <laughs> man. He, and by the way, I was right. It was Drez in 2013. Oh, congratulations. Brendan, fact check. Um, <laughs> all congrats. right. It is. Nice. It's like, he's like our producer. He's our producer. Our producer, producer Brendan. Check. Come on. Throw that stuff out. Hurry. No, okay. Watching it. Oh, it got me so excited for college football. I know. Did that just not like you just want to the fans oh, and so, the sounds and the everything so exciting. But watching it, oh, I loved Urban when he was here. And here's what I do want to say, Florida. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, when he was here, <laughs> we all know what he's had his colorful over Cares. the years. He wins. Give when, me the W's, man. He when wins, he man. was here. <laughs> I don't care. Coaching Utah, that was so special. If Utah doesn't go undefeated in 2004, <laughs> if Utah doesn't bust the BCS first time ever, no one had ever done it, wins the Fiesta Bowl, Alex Smith is number one overall pick, does Urban get hired at no. Florida? Absolutely not. So, Florida, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. By the way, I want to just your address national championships this. were because of Utah. I, I want to address this. I have talked to former players that played for Urban Meyer. Yeah. He was intense, as the documentary oh, shows. Yeah. yeah, they love him. Yeah. His former players, the guys that buy in, freaking love him, and they have. He has transformed the rest of their lives. Like it's crazy how much this guy that I know he played for him. His entire life now is still structured based off of what he learned from Urban Meyer. When you watch when you watch the documentary, if you watch some of the episodes, everything he did at Florida, that's what he did here. Yeah. At Utah. And we didn't have the caliber of talent. We didn't. I mean, but what he did here, it took him the two years, just like it did at Florida. We went undefeated. What? Plus the BCS, again, had never happened before. Wins the Fiesta Bowl. Alex Smith gets drafted number one from Utah, and everyone poo-poo's all over Utah. Oh, who's Utah? Utah's nobody. 
Utah Guess what? was the best team in the country that year. I'll we, go to my grave. Saying what that. Urban Meyer did that year, then I don't know, put him on that trajectory for the rest of his career. I mean, it is true. On that part, yeah, it was we're, we were a stepping stone. And here's the because he was at Bowling Green before that. Yeah, Urban did all of that with Ron McBride's team. Team. Mm -hmm. uh, Change it up. Uh, yeah, but the, well, the, he did what he did in Florida. But too, the recruits or, were Ron McBride. Mc, recruits those a lot of those dudes were from ron and then he came in two years later we're in the freaking fiesta bowl oh, i was correct so i was fun. well i was corrected formed john w yeah mullen did not play for the utes he just coached coached thank you john oh thanks. oh who's an oiler fan by the way john we have things to hey, talk man. about we're you're we're with you <laughs> we're, we're cheering for you mcdavid you gotta sure up that defense you would you please goalie. can you please <sighs> i don't know what else I know some people are being critical of the show that it's not that it's I will showing say, a very I will give you the good side of it. And all. you Florida guys can probably if there's any Ohio State people out there <laughs> or Jacksonville Jaguar fans. You can look up Zach Smith. I think he was I think he played on that team and then became the receivers coach for Urban at Ohio State. His podcast is called Menace to what is it? Menace Menace 2, number two, Menace 2 Sports, I believe it is, okay. Zach Smith. I watched a little segment of it today. <laughs> he had some insight and some perspective. He liked it, but, it, you know. Oh, it's very. Go look. Go look. He he knows they stuff. And them. They, and they no question about it. I mean, it's. He had a lot of more insight. It's like a hype video for, yeah, Florida. for Florida. I mean, uh, even watching for it, I was urban. like. For yeah. Urban. Even watching it, I was like. I don't want to like Florida because we're playing them next week. But watching this, you get all hyped about it. And man, that would be fun. Have to... you guys watched the Johnny Manziel one yet? I did watch it. What, I'm did, not. what did you think? I think it was the same kind of thing where it just like scratched the surface yeah. of his. I mean, yeah. that dude had so many more issues than oh. they even showed in that. That guy was out of his mind. But it, if, you, if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. Go go watch it. I got it. better things to watch Manziel. No, it's good. No, it's interesting. It's very, it, it really is the start of like the NIL. And if you think for a half yeah. a second oh, that Johnny Manziel is the first college athlete to be making millions of dollars be, after winning the Heisman, you're out of your freaking mind. Right. It's interesting. It also shows what a scumbag his agent is. I'll say that. Yeah. And kind of what of a loser his dad is too, because Johnny's struggling and his dad's like, I don't think I can do about it. <laughs> So, but watch it. They're, I mean, it's good. the All contrast right. of that. Tim Tebow looks great. Yeah, he's that a, dude has aged well. Good looking dude. Good grief! You guys are and nuts, he's man. He is, giant. He's jacked up, he, but he, like he gets into that chamber. What? What, what is are that? You talking? About? He, it's advertised. Oh, he does. Him and like, his wife. I don't. I don't. Watch at different times, get into this. Like I don't want some sort like of the freezing. Like they're they. Yeah. Okay, well, it's working for him. He looks great. I'm going to buy you one and then I like, see what happens I to need you. it, man. My knees are gone. I like All right, what do you got, Bryn? I see you got something. Okay. Bryn's got some very important No, see, I was very curious about this. Speaking of Tebow, and we talk all about Caleb all the time and the Heisman and then watching Johnny Manziel, I was curious knowing if a guy wins the Heisman, then next year, how does he do? And how does his team do? Hmm. So I went back and looked. So Tebow was the first sophomore to ever win the Heisman, which I did not realize. Florida fans, I'm sure you knew that. I didn't know that. I didn't know it. And so that's I the thing. It. It's <laughs> <laughs> you. I'm really only concerned about the players who won and then came back for another year to play because most of them win and then they go to the NFL right away. So Tebow in 2007 wins the Heisman. The next year, 2008, Florida wins the national championship. <laughs> So pretty good year. Pretty decent. Not bad. 2008, <laughs> Sam Bradford from Oklahoma wins I the Heisman. About him. The next year, they went eight and five. So not. But he wasn't there again. Yes, he was. Oh, he was. I'm only talking about the guys who came back okay, okay. for another that was, year. Okay. I wasn't really listening to you. So okay. That's rude. Okay. 2009, <laughs> Mark Ingram from Alabama. The next year, hmm. they went undefeated and won the national championship. Okay. <laughs> so pretty good. All right, and then 2012, Johnny Manziel, A&M. The next year, they went 9-4. and four. Not a good year, and if you watch the documentary, you kind of see... You see why. You see that play out, and he... Yeah. The next year, 2013, Jameis... Jameis? Winston? Jameis. 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 Jameis Winston. Jameis. 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 I knew that. Come on down. Oh, that sounded so wrong. <laughs> Florida State, he was a freshman when he won it. 
And then the Winston. next year, the next year, Florida State went 13 and one. Their only loss was in the Rose Bowl to Oregon. I remember that game. That was a good game. Yeah. All right. Then the next one, Oregon. 2016, Lamar Jackson from Louisville. He was a sophomore. The next year, they went eight and five. So not great. And then the only other one, yeah, Louisville, though. The only other one is Bryce Young, one in 2021, Alabama. Last year, they went 11 and two, which you think is a really good season, but we know at for, Alabama standards, that's terrible for Alabama. That's not great. Cause they didn't play in the championship and all of that. So it's kind of split down the middle of so what is Caleb? So gonna what do? is Caleb going to do? Eight and five. What is Caleb going to do? So what's it going to be? Is it going to be where they go on and win the national championship? Like some of these teams, or is it going to be where the team takes a dive? I don't know. What do you think? Bryn? don't give us that. I mean, I've been saying all along, I think that he himself is going to take a step back. And I don't mean he's going to have a horrible year or anything like that. I don't think he's going to have a Heisman year. No one's ever won it back to back. So if he won again, that'd be incredible. He'd be the very first one. That'd be incredible. I do think the hype has gone to his head. I've said this a million (laughs) times. And again, you watch the Johnny Manziel thing. I think that's really hard to not let it go to your head and let it kind of take over. It's like this, it's this thing of its own where you win the Heisman and then it just takes over your entire life and that can get in the way of football and your prep. So I, I've said that all along. I Could they go on, win a national championship, get in the playoff? Absolutely. I don't know. All right. That's I'll, where I'll just I'm say at. this. I think that the Pac-12 has too much parity for yeah. anybody to go undefeated. They're not going. No one's going undefeated. I, exactly. And, and even, I think... There could be multiple teams. And two so to get in the teams. playoff, you can't so have... So I think USC, yeah. out of all the teams, losses. probably has the best shot. They've got the most friendly schedule. But man, it, they're the top five, six teams, we've talked about it. it there's too many really good teams. Um, Brandon, you Caleb got- Invincible, are you out of your mind? <laughs> That's our buddy. <laughs> That's our guy. That's Mike. We shouted you out earlier, buddy. <laughs> I mean... Also, he, I think he's right. There isn't somebody else who has won back-to-back Heisman's. I don't know who it was, but but it was back in like the 90s or something. Oh, okay. I don't know. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Brendan. Brendan, where are you? Back-to-back I... Heisman's. Caleb is invincible. What's this hamstring back here then? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> when he got hit by us. That's Archie what happened. Griffin. There it is. We got like oh, seven. Oh, nice. won back-to-back. Oh, right. okay. Anyways. So it has been done. So Caleb wouldn't be the first one. Okay. I don't know. It's interesting. I kind of thought, before I went through this list, I kind of figured that most teams take kind of a dive, but no, I was definitely wrong. I mean, it seems like it's, it's pretty split down pretty the split, middle. So but there were a few that were bigger drops than I would have expected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To have like an eight and five season yeah, with the next Heisman. season with a Heisman winner. I mean, yeah, Johnny Manziel. But now if you watch the documentary, man, he, he well, spiraled. Yeah. I mean, here's a question I'm going to throw out Okay, to our fans live and otherwise do you want a demonstration on a gary utah cocktail <laughs> i can do it i can do it live let's see it well not tonight or next time no do it tonight it's eight o'clock no i can't no, we, he do doesn't it tonight. Have, he's not prepped yeah you gotta do right, it next week. week next week we will do this a will gary... this will be a blessing in everyone's life did you see that our wonderful sponsor thomas orthodontics put his recipe for your gary cocktail yeah. in the <laughs> what did you say add gasoline or something <laughs> Hey, how was your birthday, by the way? What birthday? <laughs> turned 84? I, I, right? I turned 55, and Bryn turned... What? <laughs> oh, oh, she said the real number! She's 40. She's an old lady now. How old? I was gonna... I didn't want to say it out loud. 40. When you go like this. I was Four just... What do you think? Zero. I did. I turned 40. Okay, hold on. I have a question, God. and this is open. I want oh, yeah. people's input. I have a question. Okay, question. Are, are you are you done with your Axe Smith or your Gary Utah cocktail question? <laughs> okay, I'll do it next time. Okay. I'll give we'll you. Next time. I'll show you how to do it. Here's my question. I want people's. Okay, you'll be alive. It's, it's and a two parter. You get one piece of Utah memorabilia. I didn't prepare for. I gave you a warning know, like four days ago. Didn't, didn't you prepare. get one piece of Utah football memorabilia: jersey, helmet, cleat, ball, whatever. That's part one. I want people's opinions. Number two, you get one piece of sports memorabilia, period. Okay? 
I'll give you the, the sports memorabilia right off. I swear if it's the same as mine. It's not going to be. I want the stick'em from Lester Hayes' glove. <laughs> that would be cool. I want some stick'em. That's a good one. All you old timers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Oh. Fred Belitnikoff, yeah. stick'em. Okay. Lester Hayes, stick'em. I, I want a mouth. can of that stuff. That's, you can Yours, get it. I bet ours is going to be similar. I don't know similar. if you get stick'em. Sports memorabilia? Yeah. The num- any, any sports memorabilia, period. I want a stick from Wayne Gretzky. Is that the same as yours? Yeah, I want the stick from his from his oh. 894th well, goal. Yeah, of course. That would be oh. my mecca. No, that's that, the that's game. the point. Is that's if the you point. Okay, what about a Utah star- thing? Okay. I've got one. Do you, do you need go me to ahead. go first? No, you go. I, I, want, I think I know. I want Alex Smith's help from the Fiesta Bowl. A S- Alex Smith's helmet in my office from the Fiesta Bowl would be... Mine was going to be an Alex Smith, too. I'll take his jersey, then. Okay. You can have his helmet. I'll take his jersey. There's so many I don't though, know, man. Come on. Okay, I want some of that red dirt they used to have around the football field when I was a kid. You know the old. You've got race some low track. Come on, no, Gary. There used to be a cool. race track around the field. It was like red dirt. I'd love just to have that. I'll go buy you some red dirt no, and tell it, you it had that to it's be from a special dirt. Okay. Here's here's another one I want. I want Kyle Whittingham's. <laughs> I want. The black sweatshirt that he was wearing when we won the Pac-12 the it first time. You know which one I'm talking the hoodie? about? The it's hoodie. Like cut I want that too. That'd be sweet. All right, I got so a Kyle, couple. Send a Cam it, send Rising's it hair. Way. A lock of <laughs> Cam Rising's hair. Right Ooh, on. That's a good Greg, one. Greg, that's a good one. Ben Hawkins, I'm hey, with you, brother. John W. said he wants Grant Fuhrer's helmet from the first time they won the Stanley Cup. If you're a hockey fan, Oilers fan, that would be pretty sweet. Gary Cheever's Did helmet. Did you see how today... Face mask, all the- yeah, Did you see how today Zach Whitecloud had the Stanley Cup at his his tribe? His because he's yeah, he's, he's Native, Native American. American and he had it That's at the cool. tribe today. Or he's I saw that on Canadian, media. Native he, Canadian. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> his Native tribe. You're right. Okay. That's Not true. Native what American. Would that be? In all seriousness, Native well, American. It's still North Native America. Canadian. Is it okay? Can I, isn't that right? We're gonna, we're, we're gonna I don't want to offend anybody. I'm not offending anybody. Somebody. I'm not I trying know. to offend anybody. I, thought, I am dead serious on that. What okay. would it be? Zach Whitecloud had the Stanley Cup there today, no. so I thought let's, that was let's cool. Do, let's okay. do this. Just natives. Thanks, John. I think John's in Canada. Okay. Thank you. Natives. Okay. Makes Brent, sense. Brendan had a great comment. Okay, Brendan. Brent, Bryn, don't you want Reggie Bush's Heisman Trophy? Oh! oh. No. It's available. He says. <laughs> At a good price? Yeah, you can get it for cheap, cheap, cheap. You are so right. No, here's what I want. How about Reggie Bush's? No, I can't say. I was going to say something. Well, really you got to clarify that. You really can't, inappropriate. You can't leave it hanging out no. there now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're so immature. It's scary. I do want something of Reggie Bush's. You are so right. <laughs> Somebody, give me something. Our USC fan, Mike, Brian give me something. Johnson's Sugar Bowl jersey. That'd be a sweet one. Oh, yeah, there's some Sugar Bowl stuff one. I'd love. All right. Do you want any... Uh... No, hey, I appreciate the comments, the people jumping on. It's been a lot of fun. I'm trying to not just sit here and read them, but it's a lot of fun. This and is really engagement. fun. I, I think maybe... Should we keep doing this? Maybe, I... yeah, should we do this? Absolutely. Live? I guess the one thing I'll say, the hard part is typically we record later than this. It's usually... It'll be... Monday nights, usually about 8.30 mountain, mountain time. time. So if you want to jump on so with we'll us, keep I think doing this. maybe we'll keep doing this. This is fun to be able to talk to you. And please, again, stop by the tailgate next week. Our full Florida preview is going to be um, recording on Monday night. Yep. Stop by the tailgate, and then we're going to be in Rice Eccles. If you're not, follow us on Twitter and especially on Instagram. Um, we're going to be posting a lot of content next week. And then all the details for the tailgate are going to be on those two sites. Location, if you want to donate food or drinks or just come by, please do. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Let's do this. Tell me if we're going to win. <laughs> and we're does anybody have any final? We haven't actually said. We're doing it next week. Anyway, that's next no, week. no, 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 no. We're doing it next week. Next I week, asked, we got to do our score and everything. I'm not saying prediction. I'm talking about this game. Yes, we're going to win. There you go. And I'll give you my score next on Monday. <laughs> We're going to win, Brendan. <laughs> the the must. 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 We're going to win. We're going to win. Okay, we'll get, well, I guess we'll get more Monday, detail. Monday. Any last questions anyone wants to ask of us before we roll oh, on out tonight? 
Brett Musburger voice. We are looking live. That's good. One. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one, man. That's good. The other, my other favorite one was somebody posted the gif of when Bill Bill O'Reilly was like, "We'll do it live." You ever seen that video? Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah, Uh-oh. I enjoyed this. This is fun. Uh, question: uh, Who do y'all have? USC versus San Jose. Oh. It's not about who's going to win. It's by how many points. How many points is USC going to slaughter? San so the, the spread I looked at it today was thirty-one. I was going to say sixty. I mean, it's I, it's going to be it's going to be. <laughs> here's what it, here's what it's going to be. It's going to be fifty-two ten. I said fifty-six ten. That's it. I was talking to a coworker today. I wish we were going to Ireland for the <laughs> Notre Dame yeah. game. I mean, I just want to be in Ireland. That's That'd be true. sweet. All right. Uh. But, yeah. Okay, but the, the cool thing is, oh, well, there's football this weekend. There is football this weekend. Week zero. Hey, what is with that? It's stupid. What Just, is with week zero? There's football games. There's isn't football that games. week? Isn't that week? Look, people, people, people. <laughs> now we're getting dumb. out of hand. We're getting out of hand. Is it not week one if there's games? I, I've always felt. And they're not, none of them are good. I'll say this. No. None of them are good. Na- them are is are good. it Navy and uh, Notre Dame? Yeah. In Scotland. In Ireland. No, Ireland. Ireland. Scotland. It's in Ireland. I know. It's in Dublin. <laughs> Um, I've been listening to the Dan Patrick show, so I know. (laughs) Um, I lost my train of thought. Okay. All right. None of them are good. But if you want to watch the USC game, you better have the the Pac-12 network. Don Sharp. Don. We love you. It's Don. Wait a minute. Don. Oh, wow. Thank you. Get a clap. (laughs) All right, everybody. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for checking us out. Leave comments, participate. If you have Reggie Bush's cup, (laughs) send send it it on in. My way, please. (laughs) Thank you. Wait a minute. Someone was asking, where are the glasses? You can't put them on all the time. Favorite tailgate food. Oh god. Who asked that? Jim did. Uh, Mountain Dew. that for next time.